This man is hurrying because he's frantic to join the team of experts anxiously awaiting the arrival of the 436 Wurlitzer destined for Melbourne's Regent Theatre. What does a team of talented experts talk about in a situation like this? <laughs> the trouble was, one of the diapasons was flat. Gee, that must have been terrible for me. No sign of that truck yet? They said it was come in on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, they didn't say which Wednesday, did they? <laughs> oh, I think we better send out a search bar. OK. <laughs> Finally, a lookout scout is dispatched to nearby Mount Fennel. But as yet, there is no sign. Then suddenly a cheer goes up as the first container is sighted. This first container is carrying 40 crates of pipes, together with the impressive console, which weighs approximately three quarters of a ton, and other vital bits and pieces. There are 17 tons of organ in this container. That's why it's lowered carefully and very gently. The people who make these shipping containers claim that they are easy to lock. Unlocking is another matter. Tony Fenlon and Julian Arnold contemplate the console with its impressive array of tabs. Tony and John Atwell can hardly wait until a few of the 2,500 odd pipes are connected Somebody can supply a bit of air, and the instrument can make a noise like an organ. First step is to move the console out of the shipping container, and moving it is not going to be easy. Some of the team present a stern aspect to onlookers as they probe the task ahead of them. When it is assembled, this organ will be the largest Wurlitzer outside of America, with its 2,500 odd pipes combining to make 36 ranks. The console is a centre of interest for everybody.
Tony and John are discussing what they'll play as their first duet. And who will pump the bellows? These boxes contain some of the 2,500 pipes. Meanwhile, John Atwell checks the end of bottom C for bottom comfort. The stool is strong enough to support the musical posterior of the broadest based virtuoso. That's the toy counter with the drums and the cymbals and that's the marimba beneath it. The blowers are massive. The drive motors range from 15 to 30 horsepower. Next to the blowers is the piano, destined for a place in the left-hand audience box at the side of the proscenium in the theatre. The diaphone boots are an example of finely crafted and well-preserved woodwork constructed 77 years ago. These are the chests for the horn diapasons. This tibia is resting on the tibia chest. The tall fellow reaching for the roof is a 16-foot diaphone. And this, a 16-foot English post hall. The pressure regulators are keeping company with these large tuber pipes. That is the marimba. and the two refurbished blowers. The bars and the resonators for the marimba have to become accustomed to that annoying rasping noise. As Mark Arnold files out the rack board to fit the tibias. Everywhere, there is a confusion of components. These 16-foot bombards rear over everything. The largest pipes are 32 feet long, known as the 32-footers. Those are the ones whose notes you feel rather than hear. This string pipe is not quite so big. The parts list is never ending.
As Julian explains to John Atwell, you blow through here, the music goes round and around, and uh, comes out here. More of those boxes full of precious pipes. These, for instance, are the brass trumpets. This is the solid state system for the solo side of the organ. The complexity of the wiring is enough to induce a nightmare for any electronics engineer. And the job board lists a formidable catalogue of tasks yet to be completed. Julian is wrestling with this 16-foot bombard, which must be dismantled before transport into the Regent. There's a crane at the ready at the factory, but there won't be any crane at the Regent. There it will take three men and a block and tackle to manoeuvre the pipe into its final position in the chambers. These are the reeds for the bombards. Handling the pipe chest for six ranks of the solo organ is a two-man job. Gently does it. The holes in this chest will accommodate approximately 400 of the 2,500 pipes in this huge instrument.
The automobile horn on the toy counter is all polished up, but for the moment has nowhere to go. And the snare drum is waiting to back that rhythm with a solid beat. Sydney-based electronics wizard John Andrews makes some intricate adjustments to the console circuitry. And Julian checks some of the ducting to carry the air from the blowers high up in the fly tower. The new look, refurbished, polished console, is an eye-opener for the layman and a symphonic catalyst for the fertile imagination of anyone who's ever heard or played a theatre organ. It's a change of location now to the Regent in Collins Street, where the restoration of this Palace of Dreams is still proceeding. It's obvious we're still a few weeks away from opening night. But after nearly two years since the arrival of the containers from America, Installation of the organ at the theatre is underway. The transportation and the unloading of the hundreds of components seems a never-ending task. The stall's floor makes a good storage area. Pipes and still more pipes. This is one of the pressure regulators. And this is bottom C of the 16-foot bombards which you saw being handled in the factory. The new fly tower rears high above the surrounding buildings. This will be the location of the blowers. Stan oversees the lifting of part of a 32-foot diaphone up the outside wall of the theatre. where it will be lowered from the fly tower to its final location.
next, it's time for the blowers to make their ascent. A double, in fact even treble check, is made of the tackle before the ascent. Each of these huge blowers weighs almost a ton, and the task of elevating them to their final resting place in the fly tower is difficult, arduous and dangerous. If that chain comes undone, some of the crew peering heavenwards from the street might find themselves having a closer look at the blowers than they had intended. Meanwhile, inside the theatre, the work never stops. These are diaphones on their way up to the foundation chamber. The utmost care must be taken not to damage any of the adjacent expertly crafted plaster work. And don't think that you've seen the last of that ducting. Another crate of pipes is on its way to the solo chamber. Julian is laying out the tibias. And in this organ chamber, the majority of the pipes are already in position. Let's have another look at the toy counter with all those wonderful silent film effects. The large shutters are in place. They control the volume of the organ. The 16-foot post horns are waiting to be lifted to the chambers. And this is another crate of pipes en route to the solo chamber.
The solo chamber is now complete, including the brass trumpets, which we saw earlier in the crate. Darren and Bruce are checking the action of the pipe chest. while Julian sets the pressure regulators. Bruce is overseeing the operation of the 16-foot bombards. Tony Fenelon describes part of the action to Simon Moran and visiting organist Simon Gledhill. Very little four day range will to one of the quickest so actions. Mm. It's just quite startling. Mm. Mm. So it's you can play one repeated one notes as one fast as you can. So we oh, really that, one yeah. from uh, that one came from the Omaha Theatre of Nebraska. The next major task is rigging the tackle to hoist the piano to the audience box, which is to be its home. Whilst the crew are serenaded with an obligato provided by Darren on the now playable organ. The task involves the use of two manual forklifts. But unless they are both operated at the same speed, there could be a sudden drop in the value of pianos. Eventually, success. The task is completed and the piano is intact. Only one task remains, that of retrieving the console from its storage space from the nether regions of the stage basement and placing it firmly and finally on its lift. This is an intricate task requiring the utmost care and precision handling. Thanks, Jack. 
Tony checks the comfort of the console and its stool. And then, the moment we've been waiting for since November 1994. Or longer than that, since January 1969. The Regent Wurlitzer, with the theatre's last resident organist Tony Fenlon at the console, rises again for the first time in nearly 27 years. Tony's friend and co-performer, John Atwell, tries his hand at the refurbished 436 organ in its new home, Melbourne's Palace of Dreams, the Regent Theatre. 